Oh, how many times I'm going to screw up this intro. Anyway, hello everyone, I'm Gathmas974, back again today doing a follow-up hammer tutorial. And what I'm going to go over is how to import Half-Life 2 beta view models into retail source, such as a Source 2013 single player or multiplayer mod. Now, a couple of years ago, I did a video, a hammer tutorial number 19, which was a general guide on how to import Half-Life 2 beta models into basically retail Half-Life 2, such as Source 2013 single player or multiplayer. Now, the issue is that um, you can't just copy and paste Half-Life 2 beta models over because in retail Half-Life 2, the game would just crash and you can verify this for yourself if you don't believe me. That's why there has to be this whole importing process that you need to follow. And I recommend using the tool Crowbar to do what I'm going to outline today. And as I mentioned, this is going to be specifically for view models because there are a couple instances where you can have issues when trying to use a Half-Life 2 beta model in the source engine and you might not know why or how to add stuff. So I'm just going to go over a couple of examples and call out some of the issues that you might experience. So uh, as you can see here, I'm in Crowbar and just for example, I'm going to use the Fizzgun model, which is uh, V underscore physics in my Half-Life 2 beta directory. And one of the things that I would recommend you tick is this um, include dollar sign define bones. And make sure that your um, sort of directory is set up properly over here. So for example, I'm using source SDK 2013 single player, and it's just pointing to hl2.exe, gaminginfo.txt, hammer.exe, and all that stuff. Just make sure that's all set up and there's a bunch of different options for source games. So you can just um, use whatever settings you want to. But I'm going to stick with Source 2013 single player for now. So as um, I've just done, there's the um, decompilation of the Fizzgun view model and it's detected version number 37. And you can just go through, but you'll see it's uh, created a QC file and SMD files, which are basically the raw files for this weapon. So if I go over into this directory, then we can see we've got an animations folder, a reference folder, and the uh, QC file. So if we open up the QC file, okay, to something like that. So we've got some important properties like what the model name is, the reference of the actual model, and the contents, materials for that model, and an attachment point for the muzzle. And also just a bunch of other stuff like defined bones, for example, of uh, where all these bones are and animations so you can see stuff like act vm idle act vm draw act vm reload and all that stuff so if there's anything that you wanted to add or change specifically for the fizz gun then you would change it in this file called v underscore physics.qc and then when you're finished you would go to the compile tab you would select the file in question so in this case, I need to go to my C drive, go to SDK models and the underscore physics, and then specify an output directory, specify the game. And I would recommend no P4 verbose and no defined bones. Use whatever game you want. And if you click on compile, then you should just work perfectly fine. And if there's any issues, then it will tell you. Um, it does tell you in the compile log as well to just double check and make sure everything's been a uh, compiled properly but we can see we've got uh, v underscore physics dx8090 the mdl and vvd and stuff like that so that means the file has uh, compiled correctly and so we would have v underscore physics.mdl which has successfully imported the view model for the physics gun into source 2013 single player basically um so let's just go over an example of something where you might have an issue so if i open up my directory here then how about the AR2? Because I don't think it's going to be called the OICW in the Half-Life 2 beta because the OICW is actually the AR2. So if we do the same sort of thing, do you know, just a quick decompile of that and go into our directory, then we can see we've got V underscore AR2. So if we load up that file, and again, I've got to uh, increase the size of the text. Um, again, we've got um, you know SMD references the contents, materials, attachments, all that good stuff. And if we scroll down, then we can go into the animations. We'll see um, primary attack. And we'd have hit left and hit left two and hit 
right and that's not particularly what we would want and of course uh, i think it's either five thousand to one or six thousand to one but that's for muzzle flashes so that can cause issues as well um i'll go over how to fix that shortly but um if i just load up this then we can see that um this is the half-life 2 beta code for the ar2 or the oicw and we can see that it's um the get primary attack activity function and you see it's doing you know the primary attack hit left hit left two and hit right which is what we could see inside of the uh the qc file it's doing primary attack and then hit left and then hit left two and then hit right now just a couple of fixes is that if we compare it to something like the smg from retail source you can see it actually is meant to output an activity and not necessarily an integer so that would be one change you would need to make but also when you look at the smg you'd see that it's actually doing different animations like recoil one recoil two and recoil three so if you were to copy and paste this get primary attack activity function into something like the ar2 code then you would even need to change the recoil recoil two to hit left hit left two or hit right or go into the qc file over here and change hit left to recoil and then hit left two to recoil two and then hit right to recoil three and so on and so on um, and we can actually look at a file called aiactivity.h to see that hit left and hit left two and hit right were actually meant for bludgeon weapons like the crowbar stun stick or ice axe so we would want to change those to recoil one recoil two or recoil three dependent on the circumstances okay everyone i'm just gonna have to make a small addition here because i mentioned about fixing up uh, issues with muscle flashes and as it turns out in the recording that i did for this video i actually didn't even talk about how to do it so i'm just gonna do this right now so what you need to do is replace event 5001 with ae then underscore and then muzzle flash like so and um, if you need to have any sort of idea as to why you need to do this then you can go to uh, c underscore base animating dot cpp which is under the client side of uh, source 2013 codes distribution and if you do control f then as you can see you can do ae underscore muzzle flash as seen here it is actually number 21 and it does dispatch muzzle effect of whatever it is that you want. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, then what you can see is um, CL event muzzle flash zero was 5001. So it is an obsolete event and it does an ops fire obsolete event function down here. So you can end up getting problems with that. But if you decide to do AE muzzle flash, then you can actually go to the dispatch muzzle flash function. And you can get an idea of what kind of muzzle flashes that you need to use in order for muzzle flashes to work properly, such as Combine, that's what the retail AR2 uses, the SMG1, the pistol, the shotgun, the 357, and the RPG. Now, if you do use something different, the most likely situation is that it's going to end up getting an assertion error when you try to play the game. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So use one of these. And you would use it in this kind of fashion. Um, so you would end up giving the name. So for example, SMG1. And then you also need to specify the attachment point, in this case, the muzzle. So as you can see, I'm doing this for the AR2 or the OICW. And we have a attachment called, well, it's called zero and one. But um, zero would just be the muzzle flash point, And one is where the brass gets shot out. So you can do something like, um, change attachment point zero to be muzzle and then that would cause this line down here to work properly um so it's just uh, something i wanted to point out about how to fix the muzzle flashes because i never went over it and there's just going to be one more example that i'm going to go over which is going to be the alex gun yeah the alex gun so if we take the view model for the alex gun and decompile it and then let's open up the .qc file for this. And again, I'm just going to have to increase the size of the font so you can see what's going on. And again, as per usual, model name, studio.smd, and materials, muzzle points, and all that good stuff. And if we scroll down quite a bit, then we can see we get some custom 
and then we've got sorry, custom activities such as ActVM SMG Idle, ActVM SMG Draw, ActVM SMG Reload, and SMG Fire, and SMG Fire 1, Fire 2, Fire 3, uh, Rifle Idle, Rifle Draw, because the view model for the Alex gun is actually supposed to have three different states, the pistol, the SMG, and the rifle, which I never knew. I thought it was only two states, but no, it's actually three states. But yeah, if it, you got you can't use like primary attack multiple times for the same well, sorry, for like pistol fire and then SMG fire because then it will cause conflicts and play the wrong animations when you don't want it to. So in this case, stuff like SMG draw and SMG reload aren't going to be recognized by the source code. So you need to add these or change them to activities that are already defined in the source code inside of AI activity.h. Um, so what I've done in this situation is I've actually gone ahead and added in the animations. So you need to add them to AI activity.h wherever you want to, but I've added them here above uh, TF2 specific activities. Then you also need to add them to AI activity.cpp as add activity to SR of whatever the custom activity name is, and also to activity list.cpp as register shared activity of whatever the custom activity name is. So then you can go into something like the Alex Gun code and then do something like get draw activity and then basically call upon the correct drawing activity or primary attack activity based off of whatever state the Alex gun is in. And in this case, I've only done it so it's uh, for the SMG and the pistol because adding the rifle just adds way more complexity that is completely unnecessary. So in case you end up with any of these issues, you even need to add the activities into three different places into the source code, i.e. in AI activity.h. AI activity.cpp and activity list.cpp, and then add the correct functions and call upon the correct activities. Or you just need to make sure that you're using the correct output type of an activity instead of an int, and you're using recoil, recoil two instead of hit left, hit left two, and hit right. So that's basically the video, everyone. I hope you were. Uh, learn something from this and hopefully it helps you out when it comes to dealing with Half-Life 2 beta view models in the Source Engine. Uh, please let me know what you think and if you have any issues then please let me know. But yeah, take care everyone, have a great day and leave, leave your comments in the comment section down below, subscribe for more content and have a great day and see you later. Take care out there.